everybody. Okay. Let me just adjust my camera a little bit more. There we go. <clears throat> Happy Thursday, everybody. We are doing our deep dive into sensitive skin, which again, I always forget to switch this around. Here we go. Sensitive skin, everybody. <clears throat> I love these deep dives on Thursday. I hope that you love them too. I'm learning a heck of a lot researching all of this stuff for you guys. So um, excited to share it all with you. Let's go. Let's get into our deep dive into sensitive skin. I'm personally excited about this because I am someone who deals with sensitive skin myself, but I'm hoping that it can help each of you a little bit as well, whether you deal with sensitive skin or you know, <clears throat> excuse me, someone who does, um, just to help make all the skincare stuff a little bit easier for us to all understand. So let's start in the obvious place. We talked a little bit about this on Monday, but I wanna come back to it a little bit more here. What is sensitive skin, okay? What, how do you know you have it? What's, is there a definition for it, etc.? So, sensitive skin isn't really a clinical term. It's one that's just kind of in usage these days. It's more of an expression for skin that is easily irritated than it is a clinical term. Um, but while it isn't a clinical term for for dermatologists, it basically means that the skin's natural lipid barrier, that fatty acid barrier, um, which is designed to hold in our moisture onto our skin, um, cool the skin through the release of that moisture and prevent irritants from, from penetrating into our skin, um, has become compromised. So. There's a lot of factors that can lead to why the skin is, that barrier, that lipid barrier is compromised. So it can be genetic factors, um, environmental factors, your skin loses water faster and is more exposed to harsh effects of external triggers, um, which can lead to sensitive skin. And so that becomes cracked, dry, chapped skin. So that's usually when the environmental factors have led to. So there are several indicators that you might have a diagnosable skin issue um, that includes persistent symptoms. So a lot of people will go into the dermatology office and tell the dermatologist, I have sensitive skin, when really <clears throat> it's something that is, you're having a reaction to something, um, or you've been outside on a winter day or you've been outside for a while um, on a hot day. There's a lot of things like that that can cause your skin to be sensitive for a time frame. But if you have persistent symptoms um, that either come out of the blue and stick around for a while, no matter what the products you use, then you might have something that is a little bit more of a diagnosable skin issue. So those symptoms that you want to look for are extreme redness and irritation, painful burning and stinging, both when you use products and maybe even when you don't, itching, blistering, rashes, scaling, and then bumps with pus in them. <clears throat> so those are the extreme diagnosable symptoms. So if you have those, I recommend you go see a dermatologist. Um, some of our products may work for some of that, but go see the derm first and let them kind of see if there's a deeper issue going on. So for those of us who, who are like me that just have skin sensitivity, but maybe aren't in the diagnosable category, I'm going to link to an article in the comments below that includes 10 signs that you have sensitive skin. But today I want to talk about three of them, Oop, there we go, in this live. One, your skin easily flushes. If you pay attention to me, I guarantee by the end of this video, because it's warm in this room, my skin will be redder than it was when we started. Two, if you are prone to rashes or bumps. And three, if your beauty or cosmetic products sting or burn. 
um, more so than, you know, I mean, lesser to, to a lesser degree than like a diagnosable issue. But if you, those three top things, I would say, if you deal with those and more than likely you have a sensitive skin, um, a skin sensitivity, not necessarily a diagnosable issue, but just definitely skin sensitivity. So, um, it's pretty common as we age for our skin to become more sensitive. And that is because our lipid barrier breaks down as we get older, which can cause that increased sensitivity. So, um, a lot of times what, what happens is that as our skin is or as that lipid barrier is breaking down, it's not producing enough of the fatty acids to um, rejuvenate and replenish that barrier quick enough. So that's why products that you might have been using for years all of a sudden can start messing with you as you get older. It also explains why you might experience more dryness as you get older since your skin can't hold in that moisture as well as it could when we were younger. Y'all, getting older sucks. I'm just gonna say it. I had to go to the chiropractor today for the first time ever, and I got some issues um, that I didn't have even five years ago, even 10 years ago. So not only is it in our physical joints, aches and pains and all that, it's our freaking skin and it's our moisture barrier, our lipid barrier. So, ugh. Some great ways to help your skin though break the cycle of sensitivity um, or if you're dealing with some sensitivity issues, there are some ways that you can help with that. So the first way, be gentle. Guys, can we just take this as a motto for life? Let's just be gentle, be gentle with ourselves, be gentle with other people, be gentle when touching our skin. Avoid exfoliants and exfoliating products that contain glycolic acids or scrubs that are harsh or mechanical brushes. All of those things can damage that barrier on our skin. The second thing is uh, before applying skincare products to your entire face, just do a little patch maybe on your neck or towards the back or under somewhere maybe where your hair covers it so that way if you have a skin reaction it is not your entire face and it is a place that um, you can see it but is not necessarily going to be everywhere also try to stick with fragrance free excuse me formulas as well because Fragrance, honestly, is the thing that causes the most sensitivity and most sensitive skin reactions, so just FYI. Then three, try to avoid, three, um, environmental triggers that may cause sensitive skin flare-ups. And we've talked a little bit about these, but that's unprotected exposure to wind or cold weather, hot showers, stress, spicy foods, and alcoholic beverages. Okay. So as someone with sensitive skin, I love to be outside in the hot weather and the sun. I love to take hot showers. I used to have this extremely stressful job. I love spicy foods and I like to drink. So I just have to know that when I do those things, I'm going to have some flare ups and you will, you, I don't know, some of you guys might have, if you know me in person, have seen this happen. Charlie has pointed out to me a couple times when we go out drinking, you're looking really flushed. Are you drunk? And it's like, no, I'm not drunk, but I've had some alcohol and so now I'm flushed. So all of those things are going to play a part. So either you deal with your sensitive skin or you get some good skincare to help take care of it and try to limit those things. And so I'm trying to do some limitation as well as using great skin. Um, okay, so there are some ingredients to look for in your skincare that retain moisture. And those ingredients are things like emollients, which we talked about um, in our face wash week, and humectants, which we've also talked about, I believe, in our hydration week. Um, and those are glycerin and hyaluronic acid. So glycerin is a great emollient. Hyaluronic acid is a great humectant. Also look for ingredients that replenish that lipid barrier, including ceramides, which was our word this week, and fatty acids like 
linoleic and alpha linoleic acids. Um, great, so those are things to look for. Um, again, if sensitivity, including dry, chapped, cracked, or red looking skin is a usual occurrence for you, like it is for me, then I, a daily comprehensive skincare routine is recommended. And our Soothe Regimen is designed to treat and heal sensitive skin with many of the ingredients mentioned today. Hyaluronic acid, ceramides, I believe it also might have, oh, it definitely has glycerin in it. So if you're looking for something that is going to really not only just treat symptoms, but also heal and repair that lipid barrier, then our Soothe Regimen is fantastic for that. So if you or someone you know is dealing with sensitive skin, you don't have to. Let's chat. I will find you a routine that works within your budget, whether it's the full regimen or we start you off on some products and work in others as we need to. You don't have to live with sensitive skin. You don't have to walk around going, I can't do this, I can't do that. You can um, find ways to treat and heal your sensitive skin. So that's it for tonight, folks. Please let me know if you have any more questions about sensitive skin that I may not have answered here that you were looking for, drop them in the comments and I will answer those for you and stay tuned for what our topic will be next week. Have a great night, everybody. Enjoy your weekend. Tomorrow is Friday. Praise the Lord. Bye, guys.